Welcome to our show, and today we have Mr. Ori Mahani here and talking about why he's running for City of Cupertino's council member again. Thank you, Ori, for coming. It's a pleasure. Always good to be back here. <laughs> yeah, you were uh, mayor of Cupertino twice, yes. and you were on council and mayor for nine years. Yes. And you've been living in Cupertino for 49 years. Yes. And you were the president <laughs> of uh, Cupertino Rotary Club. You just finished the term of uh, Cupertino... Uh, of a Rotary District Governor. You've been so busy running around and never had a rest. So why you decided to run for the council member of uh, Cupertino again? Well, I thought I was done with my political career. As you said, I was on the council for nine years and uh, we rotate mayor, so I was a mayor twice. Um, and I termed out four years ago and uh, I have no other political ambitions for other office, so I thought my would focus on Rotary. So what changed your, your decision? Well, the city of Cupertino is uh, going through a kind of a, a real critical time right now. So we have a, a no growth group in Cupertino um, that's trying to block a lot of the activities that are going on, uh, and particularly Valco, but not limited to Valco. Um, two years ago, they got somebody elected to the council that comes from that group and he sues the city over Valco and other issues. Um, and then there's someone else that's currently on the council that kind of votes that way. So uh, fortunately the council right now still has three people that are willing to move projects like Valco forward. We can talk about Valco later. Mm -hmm. um, but there were a lot of people that were worried uh, that if, if this no growth group got some other people on the council and, and got a majority that it would really uh, be very negative for the city of Cupertino, both from both from their what they believe in, but also how they approach things. They're very confrontational and not willing to collaborate, in, in my opinion. So there are a number of people that um, said we need to get some candidates that are the best candidates to, to work together on Cupertino's issues. And uh, Sabina Vadanathan, who is on the council now, is running again, and Hung Wei is running, that was on the high school board. And there are three seats, and people said who would be the best person uh, to fill out that uh, slate. And I got uh, drafted, and I'm happy and eager to do it now that I'm in the race and I'm talking so you to are people. So you are not pushed by other people. You, you're willing to stand up by yourself, right? Yes, but mm -hmm. I, I mean, I was encouraged, you know, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. it's important to me. So I, you know, I love Cupertino. Why, as you why said. it's so important? And what, what's the most important issue of Cupertino nowadays? Well, the big issue that's, mm -hmm. you know, I've been, mm -hmm. I've been is running for council now. I'm walking mm -hmm. precincts myself. So mm -hmm. I've knocked on a thousand doors myself, mm -hmm. my wife who's supporting me. So you are not, going to do this again? She's knocked on a thousand doors. <laughs> so originally, she, yeah, she said, are you doing this again? But now that she's knocked on a thousand doors. Mm -hmm. And um, the big issue right now that's in front of everybody, there, there's long-term issues that we'll talk about later, traffic and housing uh, mm -hmm. that, are, that are crucial mm -hmm. to the whole Bay Area, not mm -hmm. just for Cupertino. The big hot button at Cupertino right now is Falco. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can give you a little background there. So Valco is a shopping mall in Cupertino. Uh, it's been around for a long time and, and it's been declined for a long time. It mm -hmm. was under a lot of uh, caretaker management. And while it stayed the same, Stanford and Valley Fair mm -hmm. developed and redeveloped. So it was really a, a, a dead mall, even though there were some anchor stores that were still there. We've been talking about revitalizing Valco for a long time. Mm -hmm. And four years ago, um, the opportunity came up. So, so the city works with a general plan and the general plan for that area said it had to be a mall, stay as a mall. That it's a it was a dead mall. There was a study that was done four years ago that the Target store in Cupertino, we have the main Target store there, generated more sales tax than the whole mall. Mm -hmm. And that's when Penny's was still there and Sears was still there and Macy's was still there. Mm -hmm. So that says, that tells you how dead it was. Mm -hmm. The city, to revitalize it, changed the general plan to give a developer the opportunity to come up with a new plan that has retail, but also has housing and office to pay for the retail. Uh, and that got passed four to one by the new city council about four years ago. A developer, Sandhill Properties, um, based on that opportunity to do something, first of all, bought out all the different owners. Mm -hmm 
and then came up with a very innovative plan mm -hmm. that people saw up two years ago. It was called the Hills at Valco. Mm -hmm. About 400 units of housing, uh, 1.8 million square feet of office, mm -hmm. and, and 600,000 retail with a total green roof, 63-acre mm -hmm. green roof. Very, very innovative. Would have been a landmark mm -hmm. opportunity for, this, for the city of Cupertino. This no-growth group that I talked about mm -hmm. didn't like any development there. Mm -hmm. they wanted, why, why they didn't like? Why they don't like it? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The first reason that's interesting now, because now they say they're okay with housing, but mm -hmm. for a long time, people who were negative about housing in Cupertino because of the schools. Mm -hmm. They were afraid if one more child goes to my school, it's going to mm -hmm. collapse. Mm -hmm. We have the opposite problem now, mm -hmm. where school enrollment's down. And the big issue we have is that teachers mm -hmm. can't afford to live here. We're losing teachers. And mm -hmm. There was a study mm -hmm. in high school a few months ago that said that 56% of teachers mm -hmm. said they might not be here in five years. So t the people against the, 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 the growth is worrying about that, that not enough space for, for kids. Well, but now you're seeing that not enough teachers, they cannot exactly. afford to yeah. live in And there's not enough kids. Their actual mm -hmm. school enrollment's down. Mm -hmm. The other thing they're worried about is traffic. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, we could talk more about traffic later. But because of that, they put a measure. They got a bunch of signatures, mm -hmm. scared a lot of people, mm -hmm. and put a measure on the ballot two years ago mm -hmm to change the general plan back to all retail, mm -hmm. basically kill any development there. The developer put an opposite mm -hmm. measure that just said, approve this as is. Mm -hmm. Both failed. Yes, I remember that. Right. Mm -hmm. The message to me of their, their proposal failing mm -hmm. was that people still wanted something to happen mm -hmm. at Falco. They didn't want to roll it back to So the vehicle has been empty for more than two years. Yes, mm -hmm. and it's been, and then, mm -hmm. On the other side, the, the developer project failed because mm -hmm. people, I think, wanted it to go mm -hmm. back and have the council mm -hmm. do it. So uh, why the Vacomo is so important to you? Well, it's a big, it, it, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, right now, it's a big, empty, dead building. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, a, it's an eyesore. It's a, you know, it's a quarter mile from the new Apple Park, but mm -hmm. it's, you know, mm -hmm. and, it, and it's going to turn into, you know, if, if nothing happens to it, it'll, it'll turn into a, just a bad area. That's a you know. best location, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but, but the real issue is the, is the missed opportunity. So mm -hmm. the, the opportunity to put housing in, mm -hmm. the opportunity to uh, add some office, but may, mainly revitalize the mm -hmm. retail, mm -hmm. just do a whole different view. Of why that. Cupertino need to add houses and why Cupertino need to more, you know, office and more people there. Well, right. let's talk about housing first. Mm -hmm. That's the main that's the main issue. So mm -hmm. we have a housing crisis mm -hmm. in the Bay Area in, in California. Yes, yeah, been for a while. And it's mm -hmm. been growing for a while, but mm -hmm. now as you know, it's reached really crisis point. Mm -hmm. I, I mentioned earlier that we're losing teachers. Mm -hmm. We know we're losing teachers. Mm -hmm. um, even high tech people can't afford to live here anymore. You know, I, when mm -hmm. I was knocking on doors, I, there was an Apple employee that said, I can't. I can't buy a house here. You're just renting. Mm -hmm. um, so teachers, uh, support staff, you know, people, um, nurses that work in our uh, retirement homes, mm -hmm. and you know, they they're commuting in from mm -hmm. the Central Valley and whatever, mm -hmm. from Stockton mm -hmm. or whatever. So we have a housing crisis. Mm -hmm. We need to deal with that. Mm -hmm. We have a big opportunity there, and I'll talk about the state and their view on the housing crisis in a minute. Um, office pays for. Some of the housing pays for the retail, mm -hmm. so you know we don't necessarily need more office space, but that comes as part of the package. Mm -hmm. So what happened with Balco and you know where the state comes in, the state realizes there's a housing crisis, mm -hmm. and they looked at, in their view, uh, a lot of that was caused by the cities being uh, not responsive and uh, NIMBY saying, "Not in my backyard. I don't want housing." Mm -hmm. So they passed some laws to bypass the cities now. And at Cupertino, that law is called SB 35, or mm -hmm. the state law. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's one alternative for Balco now. The city council has another alternative. So right now, the hills are gone. Any other back to a mall is gone. There are only two choices now, either the SB 35 plan or the city-specific plan, which in every way is superior. Mm -hmm. Now, that'll all get decided probably before this election or, uh, you know, you know, the better Cupertino people want to mm -hmm. put another thing on the ballot to roll that back. But, mm -hmm. but it's important to have the, 
right people elected to work with the developer mm -hmm. to make sure that what goes in there does deal with traffic in the mm -hmm. best way and mm -hmm. some other things. Mm -hmm. So that's the short term, mm -hmm. Falco, but the long term, mm -hmm. like I say, housing is an issue, mm -hmm. traffic's an issue, mm -hmm. and on, on my radar screen is uh, doing doing more with Cupertino's parks. Mm -hmm. Memorial Park can be redone, as you know. Mm -hmm. You've been in Memorial Park enough mm -hmm. to know we've got the empty ponds and it's too valuable a land to leave mm -hmm. that way. We can do some new things there. I so. heard that, uh, I heard some people saying that Cupertino is good enough. We have Apple here and we don't need more houses and uh, you know if more people coming in it's going to be very crowded. The traffic, you know, the schools and everything. So who are the people of Better Cupertino and why, you know, how many of them? So what's the real issue? Well, there are, there are I mean, hope, you know, we'll find out. Mm -hmm. We'll find out in about three weeks uh, how many, you know, mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. in, this, in this next election. And that's why it's so critical mm -hmm. uh, because it will send a message, you know, of, of either empowerment for them or mm -hmm. really characterizing it as what they are, which I think is a vocal minority. Mm -hmm. um, they would... They would like to stop progress and draw up the drawbridges around Cupertino, but we can't do that. Traffic comes through Cupertino anyway. Half, more than half the traffic is just flow through anyway. So if you look at Cupertino though, like I say, I've been here 50 years. It's changed a lot. Um, and in most almost all cases for the better. We've, we've balanced housing, we've got office, you know, I, I worked at HP on that site for, you know, most of my 35 year HP career. Those buildings are gone and now we have Apple Park. That's an improvement. You know, we revitalized almost every shopping center except Valco uh, and they're all doing well. The schools, what's interesting is people go, oh, the schools are so busy, some of the schools. The biggest schools actually rate the highest. Monte Vista High, that's one of the biggest high schools, mm -hmm. rates highest in the country. So mm -hmm. big is not necessarily bad. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to deal with growth. And I think the city has done that over time. The city has a great reputation, mm -hmm. uh, not just for Apple, but for the schools and many mm -hmm. other things. People love living there. So I think we can deal with the challenges and the growth. Mm. You've been living in Cupertino for nearly 50 years. Yep. And uh, actually, you know, for you, Cupertino is your home, yep. maybe home forever. So for you and what kind of Cupertino you wish to see in the next five or ten years? So it, it is a balance. I mean, we've done some. So, again, while I was on the council, when I look at what we did, working together with, and I didn't do it, you know, the council has to be five people and the whole city staff, um, Apple Park was a major accomplishment mm -hmm. and there's a good example of working together so when we started mm -hmm. working with apple we had two very different views apple's view apple's view is any other city in the country would kill to have us here mm -hmm. they would be throwing money at us and giving us all these benefits and you yeah, want to steve jobs was still alive <laughs> so he's right. very dominant and so they'd say, you know, any other city would kill and you want us to do what? Because we wanted them to do a whole bunch of things. The council said Apple has more money than most countries and they won't even do what? Because the things we want them to do. Mm -hmm. But we worked together mm -hmm. and both were happy. The final result, the city was very happy. Apple was very happy. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing we need to do. We don't need to be adversarial. We need mm -hmm. to work but this together. time you are not dealing with Apple, a big company with lots of money. You're dealing with a different group. So again, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's about working together. Mm -hmm. and so again, what, what, what stops people from working together? <sighs> Unfortunately, it's some of the same kinds of dynamics that are going on at the national level. Mm -hmm. And they unfortunately, people get they talk to themselves. Mm -hmm. They like to fight. Mm -hmm. um, the, sorry, I know you're in the social media. Social media makes it worse. Mm -hmm. You know, next door, which is a very good idea about I lost my puppy or, uh, you know, I've got a yard sale. It's turned into a, you know, political mm -hmm. cesspool. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of thing I want to avoid. I mean, we had, it was really interesting. Mm -hmm. I talked to one of the better Cupertino people the other day. Mm -hmm. When I walk precincts, I 
would not knock on their mm -hmm. doors because it's mm -hmm. not worth it. Yes. But I accidentally knocked on one because mm -hmm. I didn't see the signs. And I talked to this woman and, you know, we, we had a good conversation. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, if, you, if you're successful with this referendum, mm -hmm. you're going to get SB 35, mm -hmm. which is a much worse proposal. Mm -hmm. And she said, I don't care. We have to fight. What does she care? She, she just, it's the fight. Fight is care. Fight is all she cares. Yeah. Why is that? Well, one of, and one of the people that you probably know, I don't, I don't mm. know if I should mention him, he's, he's treating this like a uh, political... Achievement. Uh, well, more than that, you know, mm. it's, it's uh, against, against the government, against, you know, I mean, mm. like some of the fights around the world on, in, in mm. different countries and stuff like that. So mm. there's, there's some of that there. Mm. They... they believe their own facts and mm -hmm. don't want to hear about mm -hmm. it. Um, you know, and, and we've been trying to get through that. So that's why you, I'm willing to do it. Have you noticed that uh, your city or maybe this country has yeah. been divided? Yes. People won't listen to each other. Yes. So if you really, you know, become a council member, and how are you going to change that? What are you going to do? So, so I have a reputation. Mm -hmm that way already. You have a reputation of father of Cupertino. <laughs> you know, when we worked together for Silicon Valley Food and Art Festival and somebody told me, he Ori is a father of Cupertino, the godfather of Cupertino. Oh, so, grandfather now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, so, you, so what do you think you can do, you can do to make change? Uh, well, I think I did it before, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you know Barry Chang. Yes. Uh, when I got when he got on the council, very worked, direct, very sincere person. Right, but yeah. he also can be confrontational. And yes. When I got on the mm -hmm. council, I worked mm -hmm. with Barry to go, Barry, you, we can disagree, mm -hmm. but don't make it personal. Mm -hmm. You know, if you say you know about Lehigh, don't think we're you know <laughs> want to poison people just because we don't want to mm -hmm. do that. And, and over time, he you worked together. Same thing. Mm -hmm. We had a project originally, mm -hmm. and there were four of us that were going in one direction. He was going another direction. Mm -hmm. And I said, Barry, once you see that we're going this way, join us to make mm -hmm. that project the best mm -hmm. you can be. So mm -hmm. I was success. You know, I, I worked together with, like I say, a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. So and you you mean that you have the skills and you are determined? I, yeah, and I, I don't know whether that mm -hmm. comes from uh, mm -hmm. working at HP for 35 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. HP is that kind of company. It's mm -hmm. a, it's not a tops down company. It's always been a consensus, mm -hmm. bottoms up kind mm -hmm. of company. Some people thought that was a problem, you know, when Carly thought it was a problem, but that's a whole different discussion. But no, so mm -hmm. I, I learned at HP how to bring people together and make mm -hmm. things happen. Mm -hmm. I think I can do it again. And it would be wonderful if, obviously, if Sabina and Hung got elected, then, I, then it would be easy. And again, we don't agree on the specifics of how mm -hmm. to deal with traffic and this and that, but, mm -hmm. you know, Hung is much more, uh, mm -hmm. much more excited about, about mm -hmm. Balco and, mm -hmm. and the upside there. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like going, well, here's where we are now, and this is the best we can do. But, but we, we talk and work together. That's mm. what I want to bring back. Well, I really admire your courage and your, <laughs> your passion. I feel that, you know, uh, what's happening in Cupertino is actually is happening in many of the cities in Silicon Valley. So it's not a, actually, you know, it's a common issue for now. So how can Cupertino set an example for other cities? I think we... I think we have in the past set an example. We've certainly mm -hmm. set an example for uh, diversity, mm -hmm. uh, working together, both ethnic diversity, age diversity, economic diversity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, we, I think we're a model mm -hmm. in the Bay Area and in the country for mm -hmm. people working together on all the different projects that, that uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, you mentioned Rotary earlier, and we, you know, we, I think we also set an example there. Mm -hmm. And that's great. That's what makes Cupertino great, and uh, um, that's what lets, brings people here mm -hmm. into the com companies that keep it going. Mm -hmm. uh, that openness and mm -hmm. willingness to work together on things. Mm -hmm. Want to keep that up? Personally, I know Ari Mahani for more than ten years, so I know that you are really doing this from your heart for our community. So, how can people help you to get elected? So you can vote for me if you live in Cupertino. Mm -hmm. You can donate. Um, mm -hmm. So my website is wwwmahoney 4 the number 4 councilcom mm -hmm. and there's mm -hmm. a place to donate there if you don't live in Cupertino. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, vote. 
and mm -hmm. you know you can learn more about some of the details of what mm -hmm. I'm what I'm talking about. I'm, mm -hmm. On a transportation issue, um, I differ a little bit from some of the other council, some of the current council members. I really want to look to the future and look mm -hmm. at what's going to happen with autonomous vehicles and could we link them together into virtual buses. I'm I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not convinced that light rail and some of that mm -hmm. is ever going to work, mm -hmm. at least for Cupertino. Um, so I've got some ideas there and I want to pursue those and mm -hmm. work, work with my fellow council members on yeah, it. Yeah, I think that, you know, besides your experience, um, that's uh, the very important thing is, you know, you are the person that can negotiate and link people together and bring people together, yeah. like what you did for Cupertino and other yeah. communities. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we were talking earlier about mm -hmm. the Smart City mm -hmm. uh, uh, seminar that, that uh, Barry drove last year. And, mm -hmm. and as you know, I had a chance to be the moderator for one of the tracks there. Mm -hmm. But I learned a lot of interesting things there, uh, things mm -hmm. that, that we can do right now in the city, right now being in a five-year thing. Mm -hmm. There was somebody who talked about intelligent traffic signals, where in real time they're looking at the traffic and mm -hmm. letting knowing that this light should be longer for mm -hmm. this. I mean, the extreme is you ever sit somewhere at night mm -hmm. waiting for a light to change when mm -hmm. there's no traffic, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you've got to do that by having cameras and things, but all that technology is coming and it's a lot of that was in that smart city program. Mm -hmm. So I may be uh, old and uh, gray, uh, but I've kept up with things and still want to keep new ideas going. So mm -hmm. you are young in your heart. <laughs> I think so. Yes, I, you know, I really uh, respect different opinions. I think it's good that every, people have their own ideas, and, but I believe that all the candidates uh, have the same purpose, want to do the good things for Cupertino. Yes. So we re really need someone who can dare to talk to people and help people to work together. Yeah, I think, mm -hmm. so it's, it's interesting. When, when we did one of the forums, so, so the people that are the no-growth people, they mm -hmm. claim they are representing the residents. Mm -hmm. And they claim that anybody else is representing the developers. And that's just not true. We all are representing the residents, mm -hmm. but we're re looking at the residents in, in, a, in a bigger picture. So mm -hmm. the one night at one of the forums, we were talking about a trail. Mm -hmm. They want to put a new bike trail in. Mm -hmm. So you've got residents on both sides. The people that live right on the trail are worried about certain things and mm -hmm. they're against it. And the people mm -hmm. that want a recreational trail are for, it's both residents. It's mm -hmm. residents against residents. And almost every decision we make is like that. Mm -hmm. It's the residents that live immediately near something versus the city as a whole. Mm -hmm. You know, if Valco gets redeveloped, mm -hmm. it's not for the developer, it's for the residents. People want a place to go and meet. I mm -hmm. talked to somebody today that remembers when, you know, where do the, the kids still like to go to the mall? Mm -hmm. Well, there is no mall now, and, you know, the, the movie theaters will come back there and everything. And there is financial benefit for the city mm -hmm. um, that helps all the residents. Mm -hmm. So this idea that, oh, it's the, you know, the residents versus the big bad developers is, uh, I think, a myth. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, I hope that you will get elected and uh, can work, you know, put your time and your energy uh, for the city of Cupertino. Yep. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. I'm thank willing you. to do it. Thank you. Thank you.